Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today we're going to talk about optimal bidding on The Price is Right. And the reason I'm doing this is because earlier today I saw the following situation in bidder's row. The first bidder had bid $1,000, the second bidder had bid $1,200, the third bidder had bid $1,600, and it was the fourth guy's turn to make a decision, the fourth and final guy, and he made a silly choice. So I want you to stop for a moment and think, what is this guy's optimal choice? What is his uh, optimal bid? And keep in mind that I have not told you anything about the prize they were actually bidding on. All I have shown you is that one guy bid 1000 one guy bid 1200 and one guy bid $1,600. So think about this for a moment, pause the video, go ahead and add a comment to the video on YouTube down below, the actual video, and let me know what you're thinking, let everyone else know what you're thinking. Alright, if you've done that, let's move on. Basically, there's only four reasonable or good choices here. $1, $1,001, $1201, and 1601 why are these the only four good choices? Well, I think it's best if we look at this as an example. So why is 1601 a good choice and not anything greater than 1601, like 1602 or 1603 or 2000? So imagine I had bid $2,000. According to the rules of the Price is Right, you win if you're the closest to the actual retail price without going over. So in that case, if I bid $2,000, given those other bids, I'm going to win if the actual re retail price, the ARP, is greater than or equal to $2,000. Now, in contrast, suppose I had bid 1601. When do I win here? Well, I'm going to win if the actual retail price is greater than or equal to 1601. Fun little fact we can get out of this. Bidding 1601 is going to win whenever 2000 wins, but it also wins sometimes when 2000 would not have. Basically, if the prize is anywhere between 1601 and 1999, then bidding 1601 gets you the victory, whereas bidding 2000 would not. And you can extend that logic to the other choices. So why isn't 1202 or 1203 or anything between 1201 and 1600 not a good choice? Well, it's because 1201 would win uh, whenever one of those numbers won, but those numbers don't always win whenever 1201 wins. And the reason that anything between 1001 and 1200 isn't as good as 1001 follows the same logic. And $1, of course, is better than, say, $998, because $1 wins whenever 998 wins, but $1 also wins when the price is less than $9.98. So that's why there are only four good choices there. I think that's obvious to people who've been watching The Price is Right for a long time. I don't know how they get these silly people on the stage who don't do this. But, like I said, I think that part's obvious. What's not so obvious, though, is the reason why I think one of these objections to, to adopting one of these kinds of strategies is a little bit silly. So sometimes you'll, say, you'll hear people say that bidding 1601 makes you seem like a jerk, which is why you shouldn't do it. You shouldn't bid 1601 because it does, in fact, make you look a little bit mean because you've essentially denied this guy who bid $1,600 any reasonable shot of winning, and that's, you know, that makes you look like kind of a bad guy. So I don't actually think this objection holds much weight, and here's why. There are only three things that can happen if you bid 1601 in this situation. The first thing that happens is the price is less than $1,600, in which case neither one of you wins. So it didn't actually matter that you were being a, quote, jerk in this situation because the other guy wasn't going to win anyway. Second option is that the price is exactly $1,600. If that's the case, then you lose and he wins. So despite the fact that you looked like a jerk, didn't actually do anything, he won and he's not going to be mad at you. So, so much for you being a jerk to him. He's actually the happy one after all. The final thing that could happen is that the price is greater than $1,600. And if that's the case, guess what? You win. So you're also a jerk because you bid 1601 and screwed over the other guy, but at the same time, you just won the prize and you're on stage, so you don't really give a damn. I don't, that's why I, I think that that objection doesn't really hold much weight there. Now, to wrap up the video, if you're on, the final bidder on the price is right, there are only two smart types of bids, $1 and exactly $1 more than a pre-existing bid. But there's a slight caveat here, which I'm going to leave for potential objections that I might see in the comments. If you exactly know the price that... Uh, the prizes that you're bidding on. If you bid that amount, then you get a $500 bonus for being exactly right. But if you know the exact price, then you're just a Price is Right God, and I bow to you, and I respect you, and good job, congratulations, you're much better than I will ever be at that game. But if you're not that kind of God, which I don't think most players are on the Price is Right, then you should adopt one of the two strategies that you see right there. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you later.